Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I show you step by step how to build and fly this twin engine airplane made by made from foam board. Let's get to it. Hi, in this video, I am going to build a foam board twin engine uh, model airplane. In a previous video, link is in the description, I showed a very easy way to set up twin electric motors for your RC model airplane using two electronic speed controls and two batteries, which I think is the easiest way to do stuff. Now, let's go ahead and fly it. So we have to design and build an airplane for these two engines. So I've called it the twin stir. I may come up with a different name, I'm not sure. But this is what I do with the foam board airplanes. This is hand drawn out to scale of what I think the plane will look like. So we'll have wing mounted engines and it's a factor of eight. Whatever dimension is measured off of this plan, multiply by eight and you'll get the full uh, size that you'll have to sketch out on the foam board. And I'll show that as I build it. So just a lot of straight lines, uh, very simple, simple layout. But the important thing are the um, two engines on the wings. It'll be a four channel model with ailerons, rudder, elevator, and of course, throttle. So that being said, let's go ahead and start construction of the uh, Twinster RC model airplane. This is a review of the setup of the two batteries and two electronic speed controls for the two motors. It's typically the easiest way to do it for a sports setup. Uh, here's everything. Notice there is one receiver, uh, two ESCs. Because of two ESCs, you've got to cut the wire of one electronic speed control for the battery eliminator circuit. That's the red wire. So you don't get conflicting signals to the um, two different EFCs. Just one has to control that. Here is the cut wire. It's still a hot wire. So it's important that you put some heat shrink tubing on it. And if you need to use that electronic speed control again, simply reconnect the two wires. And here is that heat shrink tubing on it just to protect it from uh, shorting out. Here's a completed setup. Uh, remember, you're not quite sure which direction the motor is going to work. So you may have to just reverse any two wires on the motor to reverse the direction that will work out. I keep a little diagram, uh, the left right motors and where the various wires go. This is the video of how to build a foam wing in 10 minutes. The description is uh, the link is in the description. So we'll just kind of recap that. This is the foam board. It's an eight inch cord for the um, wing, the width of the wing. I draw a line right there because we're going to fold it in half over that line. The spars of the um, wing are two one inch uh, wide, three six inch foam, uh, foam board. Glue that one on top of another, makes a very strong um, spar. Here is that spar one inch back for the leading edge. We just pull that back, we fold the wing on itself, glue it at the trailing edge, makes for a very nice wing. And here's a completed wing, it's one panel. We can see the spar inside, and with the glue on the top and bottom of the spar and at the trailing edge, it's a very strong wing setup. These are the two wing halves right here. We're going to have to join them because the foam board is only 30 inches wide. This is a 44 inch wing. I decided to use two 1 16th inch plywood uh, spars to join them. There is no dihedral on the wing. It is a flat wing. Uh, that is fine for a model like that. You don't need any dihedral. So we're going to glue those in place with epoxy front and back, put the two wing halves together. And this is the completed wing right here. Now it's time to take a look at the fuselage. We'll take a look at the plans. Um, all the dimensions are sized up with a factor of eight on the plans you can download from the description. These are the two fuselage sides, three inches high. We cut those out. Notice the um, fuselage is longer than 30 inches, so there's another piece that has to be glued onto the front. That's that line right there, because the fuselage is longer than 30 inches. Here are the two fuselage sides with the wing cut out as shown. The straight on the top will be the reference point for the stab and on the airplane just makes it easier to go together. There will be formers to put the fuselage together. I decided to make the fuselage a width of two inches. That's good for the um, fitting of the battery. You can make it a little bit wider if you want for more room inside. And again, you're going to cut openings in the former so the control wires and such can go back and forth. 
using hot glue, we glue them in place on one side. And then we just uh, make sure we line it up over a straight line and glue on the other side of the fuselage until we have the computer completed fuselage assembly. It's a it's a straightforward assembly, nothing fancy, and goes to go, goes together well. We'll take a look at the plans again to make the tail surfaces just flat surfaces for the stabilizer and vertical fin. There will be a rudder and elevator that will eventually put on. Here's the top deck. On the back of the fuselage to save weight, I did not add it to the bottom of the rear fuselage. So you saw the construction. This is the wing right here. It's two 20-inch wing panels joined with the 1 16th inch plywood spars. I think this will be plenty. I'll put some uh, reinforcing tape on it as I get closer towards finishing it. And you can see the airfoil shape. This is the arm and wing technique. I have a detailed video on how you can build these wings in 10 minutes. It's very easy with a foam board, and I'll put that link in the description. So this is the wing, and it's a, it's a strong wing. It's really surprisingly strong with that um, uh, foam board spar inside. It's just, it'll, it, it's a good wing for what we'll be building here. And this is the fuselage to date. Again, very simple construction, just flat sides. I have a flat front. I've got some scrap foam that I'm going to carve just for a rounded nose because, of course, the wing, the engines are on the wings. And here's the tail. We'll have a simple elevator rudder on the back. I think I'll put the servos back here, wire extensions to hook them up to the um, receiver, and just a very simple construction. So we'll tackle the engine mounts tomorrow on the wing and see how that goes along. Now it's time to plan the installation of the motors. These blue lines right here are the width of the fuselage, one inch either side of center line. I'm just kind of roughly putting the motors in place because you've got to make sure there's clearance between the props and the fuselage, but you want the motors as close to the fuselage as possible. I've drawn in uh, the line for the fuselage and also I slotted in the 1 16th inch ply firewalls for both engines. There's a little bit more strength by epoxying them into the wing itself. These are some side supports for the um, firewall. Want a little bit more durable installation, 1 8 inch plywood. This is a prototype, so just the 1 16th inch works. The motors are screwed into place with the wiring, just seeing how that goes. Notice the cutouts for the wirings to go around the uh, firewall. This is another view of the motors screwed into place, and we're starting to install the battery just to see how everything's going to fit in the, um, in the middle. These are the nacelles that will go either side of the engine motor mount for decoration as much as anything else. Notice the wing tape at the wing center section. Here are the nacelle sides are glued into place. You can see the screws for the motor and there's enough wire length where I can put the electronic speed controls and battery in the fuselage. So Rudy has come over to say hi and see how the Twinster is coming along. Rudy, thank you for helping out. Thank you. They'll wander around. All right, so um, lots done today on the airplane. Uh, here is the wing right here. I've put on both engines, as you can see in the previous videos. The firewalls are slotted and mounted into the wing with back plywood reinforcing. I think that'll help. Also notice the reinforcing um, drywall tape with hot glue on the top of the bottom. I think that'll help keep the, everything together. Now, one thing that I did when when I do these designs, I kind of call it a conceptual design. I'll draw out the rough dimensions, um, and then as I build, I make adjustments. One thing that I have done in this wing, each wing panel on the um, plans are 20 inches long. I made each one 22 inches. I added another total four inches to total wingspan. I'm glad I did that because, again, this is my first regular twin aircraft. There's a lot of weight out here on the wings. I think having more wing area a little bit larger ailerons will be helpful just with the roll control and, and you're going to have to keep your speed up. I can see that. Also, I <clears throat> made a design change as I was building it. I had the idea of putting the batteries and the electronic speed control in the engine nacelles and then wire extensions, servo wire extensions to the receiver. The problem with that is there's not a ton of room here and it's going to add a lot of weight away from the um, central axis of the airplane. It just turns out that I have enough wire length where I can put the ESCs, the fuselage goes right along here. So the, so the ESCs will be inside the fuselage 
which means the batteries, the two batteries for each engine will be inside the fuselage. This will have the benefit of keeping the weight out from uh, away from the center for so you're not countering that with roll. And I can shift the batteries fore and aft to help with center of gravity um, issues. So this is the wing right here. And I think it's a pretty good shape. Notice that I have clearance over the wing for the prop. These are just kind of decorative uh, the cells here. Fuselage is here so far. I just took some uh, foam board hanging around, carved it to a rough shape for the nose. This is um, wood filler. We'll sand that, see how it looks. I may paint it just for decoration. And again, the batteries can be here or here for center gravity. And what will happen is, and also on the tail, I've got the uh, elevator and the rudder. I think I'll probably put servos back here for shorter leads extensions to go to the receiver. We'll work on that tomorrow. And then also tomorrow, I'll make sure that this goes properly onto the wing. I'll have to have cutouts uh, for the wires for these going in, but that'll be easy to do. And I think I'm probably going to glue the fuselage onto the wing. I think that'll be easiest for that, just so we're not messing around with rubber bands. And then hitch up the control surfaces, make the ailerons, hitch those up, put in the servos, and we should be getting pretty close to flight. So overall it's going well. It's heavier out here with the edges as I mentioned, but the overall weight is okay. So I think it's coming in under target. It should have plenty of power. And that's where we are right now with the build. The model's coming along. Here's the carved styrofoam with wood filler in the nose section. This is where the fuselage will go into place. Notice I'm gonna to have to do a cutout to allow the wires to go inside. And this is the cutout on the left side as well. Just red tape to kind of hold the wires in place. Here's the fuselage initially glued in place on the wing. We can see the covers on the nacelles for the, for the engines and the wires go into the fuselage. I did add a side piece to each saddle for the wing just to have a little bit more area for the wing to glue on. The servos for the elevator and rudder I decided to put on the top of the fuselage hot glued in place and with wire extensions purchased at Amazon to extend from that installation to plug into the receivers with the rudder and elevator shown here. We'll do an update now of where we are with the uh, twin model flyer and we've kind of reached a stopping point. I'll tell you why in a second here. So here's everything set up with the ailerons, the control surfaces, four channels of flight as I mentioned. The receivers and the electronic speed controls go into here. You can see everything along. The two batteries will be up front. That'll work for the center of gravity. I made the decision to use three cell batteries for the most power. This is a, a surprisingly heavy um, airplane. There's something weird in my scale. I don't know the exact weight, but it's heavy with the two motors. So we're going to have uh, three cells for playing power. And I'll cover this with um, a, a foam board hatch uh, before the flights. So the one thing I wanted to point out is, as you know, I have two different motors that looked about the same size. As I put in the batteries and uh, powered it up, there was just different power on acceleration rates of the two motors. I'm not willing to uh, risk a test flight with that. So I have the um, E-Flight Park 400 on this side. I ordered another one um, yesterday. Once it comes to the mail, I'll swap it out with this motor here. So we have the same motor. We should be good to go. One other thing before we power it up that I did, you might notice is I put dowels here for the wings. Now the wings are glued on, uh, but I, I just, I don't want the wings to come off. So what I did was I put in the uh, dowels. I'll just put some rubber bands over the bottom here to um, help keep the wing in place uh, should it get loose for whatever reason. So I think it's in pretty good shape. Um, I cut these little V's right here. This is 25% back from the leading edge of the wing for the center gravity. So you'll see that balances out pretty good. Let me take a break just for a second. I'll plug in the batteries. We'll see the controls of the motors, and then um, that'll be that for this, this section. So we're going to plug in the batteries. I remember this mod has two batteries, two, ES, two ESCs. I removed the BEC wire on the right ESC. What that means is it's very important to plug in the left one first because that has the battery eliminator circuit wire that talks to the receiver that allows everything to work. So what I've done is on this one, I have a little L put in here for the left battery. This is the one we do first. We'll go ahead and plug that in. We'll put the battery in the nose like that. And we'll go ahead and turn on the radio. Give it just half a second to catch up with the plane. 
And there we are. So we can see elevator up, down, rudder, left, right, ailerons work correctly. And because one battery is hooked up, just one motor works. Now keep in mind, everything's working here with a prop. So I'm going to be careful putting this in, keep everything, everything clear. The two batteries fit in nicely. And now that the second one is in there, hold it here. There'll be plenty of power here. Also, when I hold this here at the center of gravity, you can see it balances very nicely. So that's where we are. Uh, should get the park motor in a few days. We'll put that in and then head out to the field for a test flight. So the next time you see me, it'll be at the field for a test flight. We're out of the flying field. It's just a perfect day for a maiden flight. We'll do a walk around um, of the airplane. Everything's in order. Everything checks out with the controls. And um, I think we're all set to fly. I did add some paint scheme to it using poster paints. I think it helps with the identification of the airplane in the air. And it looks kind of nice. Now it's time to head out to the flight line for the first flight. Go ahead and check for traffic. Just make sure everything's OK. I used uh, three cell batteries that I highly recommend, plenty of power, and you see the plane just literally flies out of my hand. And off it goes under full control, handles very well. It just, it was an extremely comfortable airplane to fly. I think the lightweight, the large wing, it just, it could not have handled any better. There's no trim needed for this flight. And uh, here we are doing turns and just enjoying the airplane until we wind up landing here in just a moment. Beautiful, man. So I'd like to thank Leo and his son, Leo, for coming out here and filming this. The test flight, the maiden flight of the Twinster could not have gone any better. It, it handled exceptionally well. Um, a lot of the flight was at one third throttle. I think you can see that. It's just, uh, it's just a great little airplane. So the plans are available for download in the description. Mm -hmm. If you want to build one, it's easy to do out of three six inch, inch foam board and very, very happy with how this plane came up. Thank you. All right, Leo, thank you very much for filming the flight. You're welcome. This is a Twinster by Tim McKay. He flew amazing, stable, not a, a no trim needed. Uh, follow the video to see how well he flew. Thank you, Leo. You're welcome.